Welcome to the channel, welcome to Las Vegas, welcome to Harrah's. So yes, I'm staying at Harrah's. It's cheap, it's cheerful, but what's the room like? This is the cheapest room that they do at Harrah's. I've traveled a long way to come and see it. I hope it's all right. So let's get started and have a look around. Uh, adjoining door, I hate adjoining doors. I don't know why, I just don't feel very safe in this an adjoining door. Uh, full length mirror there. And this is a, well, it's supposed to be a mountain view room. I'll show you the view uh, very shortly. So uh, one bed, and uh, let's see what other amenities that we've got. We've got a 42 inch flat screen TV with your regular free to air channels. Uh, nice uh, lampshade there, it's all right, isn't it? Uh, not electric curtains, you've got to pull them yourself. Um, then we've got a nice chair to sit in here if you want to look out with the spectacular view that I've been given. I can't wait to show you the view. Let's just have a look inside the, uh... oh, they are not drawers, they don't open. How weird is that? Okay, so there's gonna be no Bibles in the drawers then. Uh, over here, we've got a little, uh, little seat for when you're doing your makeup, ladies. Uh, we've got a safe. Um, right, well, we've actually got some drawers. There's one there, one there, and one there. So we've got a safe. We don't have a fridge or a microwave or anything like that. If you want to rent a fridge, I believe it's $20 a night. Uh, a few cups and an ice bucket. Mm, the ice bucket could do with uh, one of these bags inside it so that you don't get all dirt inside. Uh, right, uh, over here, shall we see if this is a drawer? No, it's not. Why would you have bedside cabinets and they're not drawers? Um, phone, next to the bed, we've got some plug sockets. I don't know if you can see them. Regular USA plug sockets, of course. Um, bed. Looks like a queen bed to me. Is it a queen, would you say? Yeah, I think it's a queen size. So two pillows, you can always get more pillows from uh, housekeeping. Right, let's just, so there's the exit door with the emergency exit plan. Uh, let's pop into the bathroom and see what we've got and see how clean it is. So, uh, some more plug sockets down there. Your light controls. Sink looks clean, uh, mirror's nice and clean as well. Can't fault that. The vent's dirty. Can you see all the dust in there in the vent? What else have we got? Toilet, looks clean enough. Yep, it's been cleaned. I do like it when they put paper around though to show that they've been cleaned and sealed, but I guess with everybody going green, they don't do that anymore. Uh, behind here, behind the door, we've got an iron, an ironing board, some coat hangers. These are quite nice, they actually fill these up for you. So you've got body wash, conditioner and shampoo, so if you forget to bring yours, then uh, they're just mounted on the wall there. Uh, shower head, shower the... Ugh. Tiling is a bit grim, isn't it? They're really, ooh, it's even worse down there. Look, they could have done with uh, getting the grouting done, getting some... Um, Ugh. Yeah, they really need to get some bleach in here. Shower head looks okay. Yeah, not too bad, but yeah, the, the tiling is grim. Not good at all. Um, tiling on the floor is okay underneath here. Hair dryer, more toilet paper, more of your towels. Obviously, you can get more towels for free just by asking. Right, let's pop through now. I'm gonna switch off all the lights because it's time for, you're gonna like this, the black light of doom. And anything survived the black light of doom. I'm gonna turn that light off in the corner and then we'll get started. Right, we'll do the carpets first, shall we? Carpets look okay, see stains down there. Can you see how the black light of doom picks up the stains? Is there any stains on the curtains? Because some fellas like to wipe the bits on the curtains. And they don't mind if you wipe it on the curtains. <laughs> she 
stains on the carpet down there. I mean, I guess it's only to be expected. Stains there. Uh, more grim stains there. Uh, <clears throat> we'll do the bathroom next and then we'll do the bed. Even more stains under there. What's he asked you to do, Neil? He's got to collect a load of samples down there. What, of your spunk? I dread to think what those stains are. Okay, so coming through to the shower and the bathroom. Looks pretty clean on the countertop, nothing there. And the toilet is okay. Ugh, look at all that scuzz there. Can you see that? That is a shower that has not been cleaned properly. All scuzz along there. Inside the shower, yeah, it's not too bad. It is a bit scuzzy though, like I said, you know, unlike all the grouting. So, uh, yeah. Could be worse, but like, round the edges, can you see? It's all really scuzzy and disgusting. Blech. Right, let's go and do the bed. Now this is the bit that always worries me when I go to a hotel. Let's have a look at the pillows. The pillows look clean, thank goodness. Is the headboard clean or is there any money shots on the headboard? <laughs> oh, look at the scuzz down there. Ugh, that is not clean at all. I know it's a cheap hotel room, but let's have a look down there. It's a bit scuzzy down there. Right, let's, uh, let's pull the sheets back and have a look at what we're dealing with here. Da -da -da. Light of doom. Well, the sheets are clean, thankfully. Yeah, there's no sort of patches of um, bodily fluids. Let's take this uh, off and let's have a look at the mattress. Well, there's a mattress topper. The mattress topper is clean. Okay. I don't think we can get to the actual mattress. No, the mattress is sealed with... Oh, no, it's not. No. Right, here we go. Ugh. Excuse me a second. Oh, my. Pull this back and have a look under the mattress topper. There's another sheet. Oh! Can you see? Like, they're like blood stains that are on there. Blood stains there. Let's take all of this off. And then I might get housekeeping to come up and have a look. Blood stains there. You should get yourself one of these black lights from Amazon. They're about $20. And they will show up everything that you really don't wish to see. So this is actually attached to the mattress. So yeah, this is what you're laying in underneath the clean covers. is blood, basically. Okay. End of black light. Right, I've left the bed sheets. I'm gonna get um, housekeeping to come in and see if they can do anything about the blood stains, but that's pretty grim, isn't it? Let me tell you how much this room costs. This room goes from $39 up to 129, depending upon what time of year it is, how busy they are, you know, lots of different factors. I booked this through Virgin Atlantic uh, because I've come over from the UK, obviously. Now, let me tell you about the check-in experience, which was not good. So I arrived, you know, after traveling a long time, I got in for about one o'clock. I was told it was $50 to check in early. Okay, I know a lot of places do that, yeah, so there we go, what can you do? Um, so I waited around, I was told to come back at half past three. I came back at half three, the queue situation was terrible. They've got kiosks downstairs and then they've got a reception. The kiosks are automated. So you go over, you put your credit card info in, you put your driver's license in or whatever, it spits out a room for you, happy days. However, the problem is, is that they just don't work. So you're waiting at the end of the queue. If you wanna to speak to a human being, say for example, you wanna split your resort fee over a couple of credit cards or whatever, then um, you wait for a person you know, to become available in the uh, behind the, the counter, as it were. The problem is, is that the staff then put through the people behind you to the kiosks. Invariably, the kiosks don't work. I mean, everybody that went to a kiosk while I was there didn't work. So then they jump the queue effectively, not them on purpose, but they then get put with the human being behind the counter. So you're waiting. So I had to wait around another hour to get through. So I got through uh, and spoke to a chap who was very blasé, 
like you know just a not a good member of staff um, and he said that there is a resort fee to pay of course there's a resort fee we know that $50 a night it is pretty much and then there's an incidental fee so you expect well they'll put a hold on for like two if you're here for a week or so they'll put a hold on for $200 no the guy wanted $900 and I said well I don't charge anything to my room and when I was here last time it was $200 you know, you kind of expect that. I mean, you know, not that I'm going to damage the room or charge anything to the room. So he said, oh, no, no, he just shook his head really nonchalantly, you know, like real attitude problem. So he went and got his manager. The manager came back. The manager was nice and said, uh, well, you know, if you can do $200, then that's absolutely fine. So I don't know why they couldn't do it in the first place. So process the payments, you know, and... Um, the guy's tapping away on his keyboard and then he literally just writes a number down on a card. Let me show it you. So he hands me this. Well, he doesn't hand it me actually, more launches it across the counter at me. Didn't explain whether that was room 40, floor 47, room 069, or whether it was floor four, 7069. He just said to me, the elevators are in the casino. So I then had to go and find another person to tell me exactly, exactly, you know, where my room is. Is it is it floor four? Is it floor forty seven? So I spoke to one of the managements that's on the floor, and, and he was really apologetic. He said, "I don't know why they've been like that." And you know, I'm a nice person. I don't, you know, I don't complain as such. But I, I just wanted to know why the incidentals were so high. So he said, "Oh no, it's floor forty seven, room 069. So 47069, and don't come knocking on the door because I'll have gone by the time this video comes out. So I thought, well, 47th floor, that's probably going to have a good view. But let me show you the, the amazing view they've given me. Welcome to Las Vegas. <laughs> I have a view of a roof and piping, and I don't even have a window there. It's sealed off! Look! It's completely sealed. There's no window there. I don't know whether it's been knocked in at some point, so... <laughs> I think that's the other tower. This is supposed to be a, a mountain view. I think right in the distance there, there might be a mountain. I'm not sure. And then over there, that is Casino Royale's uh, car park. And that is the back of the Venetian. So, um, yes, uh, a, a, a really stunning view given to me by Mr. Happy behind the counter. So, what do I think? Well, it's cheap, okay? I mean, you look at Harrah's, Flamingo, The Link, they're gr a really good location. You're centre strip, you're, out, you're over the road from Caesar's Palace and Bellagio, and you're next door to Venetian if you're at Harrah's. Uh, not very impressed with the room. As you can imagine, finding blood stains uh, with the UV light—that's really unacceptable, to be honest. So I need to—I need to deal with that. I need to speak to housekeeping about that and see what they can do with that mattress. Uh, the check-in process was so convoluted. I mean, honestly, if you're coming from a long way away, you know you're, you're absolutely knackered. Especially if you're coming from the UK, you're literally travelling for 24 hours, you know, and you're absolutely knackered by the time that you get here and you really want it to be sort of pain-free checking in. Uh, checking in here is not pain-free. I cannot recommend the check-in process at all. It doesn't work, and this is owned by Caesars. It's a Caesars property, so you would think, with them owning Caesars Palace and plenty of other places, that they would have the check-in nailed on, but no. Uh, the staff, the attitude of two out of the three staff that I spoke to, because when I was in the queue, I asked, one of the ladies who was dealing with the queue, why people were allowed to effectively jump the queue. And she just said, well, that's how the process is. And I thought, right, okay. Instead of saying, really sorry, sir, um, look, we'll, we'll get to you as fast as we can. That's how you deal with the public. You know, you don't have an attitude problem if you're in the service industry. So maybe some retraining is needed there. But I recommend staying at Harrah's. If you're on a budget, location's good. Rooms are a bit tatty, aren't they? A bit grim. Um, no, I'm going to give it a no, uh, purely because of the blood all over the mattress and the check-in process. Not very happy with that, and it would have been nice if they'd have explained that room 47014, whatever it is, 
was not on the 47th floor, even though the elevator says it's the 47th floor, you're actually four stories up overlooking a, a roof. And I wasn't given any opportunity to upgrade. They didn't say, would you like a, you know, would you fancy spending a little bit more money? We, we can do you a suite. No, the guy was just had a, such an attitude problem. Um, so, no, it's a thumbs down from me, I'm afraid. Stay somewhere else. Stay at the Flamingo. I mean, the Flamingo is cheap and cheerful, but, you know, it's it's better than this. The Link, I don't know. I need to go and stay at the Link and see what it's like. But I've stayed at most places on the Strip, believe it or not, in the last 30 years of coming to Vegas. This is a bit of a toilet. Sorry, folks. Anyway, please like and subscribe. Plenty more videos on the way. Yeah.